One cloudy Saturday morning, I was sadly looking outside my living room window, thinking about how clean our digital cameras have become. Something I often think about. Missing the old days of film, I was thinking about the textures, the glow, and oh, the halation. How I miss that halation. And then, out of the blue, huh? I got an email notification. Hello, Renee. We heard that you were sad. <laughs> yes, we know. It's okay. You don't have to lie to us. We know life without film is pretty hard, and that's why we want you to review our Dehancer plugin. We are certain this new plugin will turn that frown upside down. And just like magic, the world around me started to change. The grain, the film glow, and ah, oh, the halation started to reappear in my world. Finally, life was filled with film emulation. <laughs> All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that little intro video. Um, basically, Dehancer reached out to me and wanted to know if I'd be interested in reviewing their uh, plugin for DaVinci Resolve. And as a cinematographer, I you know often try to make my footage look a little bit like film. I think I've always been intrigued by the look of film. I enjoy shooting on film. And I also shoot a lot of 35 millimeter photos and I'm just obsessed with the look of film. The film grain, the halation, the, the, the bloom, the glow, everything about film is so interesting. So when they said that they had a plugin that emulated film, I was instantly intrigued and had to test it out and see if it worked in my current coloring pipeline. And as you can see, I took some of my older footage and applied the film emulation to it. And I was honestly really impressed with a lot of how it kind of turned out, but I wanted to test it on, you know, narrative films that I shot, some documentaries, and to see if it would be something that I could apply in my own pipeline or my own workflow. So my first impression of the plugin was a little bit mixed, but I was both impressed and a little bit confused with some of the decisions that they did for this specific plugin. And that confusion was mainly because of how strong everything comes in when you first apply the plugin. And so their default setting on everything is just ramped up to the max. It comes on really, really strong. And it's not the end of the world because they have so many adjustments that you can really fine tune exactly what you want for your specific shot. And so when you first look at this plugin, you might feel a little bit overwhelmed, but don't worry because it's actually quite simple. And they have everything divided into really neat categories. Like they have the film stocks, which they have so many different film types, which is really, really cool. They have grain, they have halation, they have bloom, film damage, and they even have gate weave. Now it's important to understand that it's not simply a plugin that you apply and it instantly makes your footage look like film or just even better, which I find a lot of the other reviews were saying that it's like a one-stop shop and it has everything that you need. You don't need to do any color grading. It's like just perfect. I think that's not exactly accurate. So this is my honest opinion. Like when I first opened it, I was really impressed. I thought everything was really nice and the film stock option was super, super cool. But then I also realized that you have to do a lot of adjustments to really get it to what you want it to sit at. And that's not a bad thing. That's actually a really good thing because you have the option to manipulate all these little micro details that you might or might not want from that film emulation. This isn't going to be a really technical review. Um, again, I'm approaching this as a cinematographer. I'm not a pro colorist. So there might be things to be done differently, but honestly, even if you're not a pro, it's a very simple plugin to you. All right, so let's take a look at how I color grade with Dehancer. The way that I like to work and the way that they actually recommend you to do it is to actually place it at near the end of your pipeline. So you wanna do all of your exposure, primary, contrast, saturation, all that kind of stuff before 
Um, and they have a lot of options for the source. So you can actually, depending on what your CST is, have it uh, 709, you can have Rec 2020. If you're working in the DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate or Filmlog, so whatever kind of profile that you end up working in, basically Dehancer has a really nice input source and you can kind of adjust it for your needs. Now, I usually work within DaVinci Wide Gamut, but I found that I was getting better results overall by going through my uh, Kodak LUT. So, so this is exactly what I have. I have it in a compound node so I can, you know, adjust my uh, intensity, my key intensity with that specific node. But as you can see, I have the film look and Rec. 709 Kodak 2383. Uh, applied with a CST. So in this case, I'm just using the Rec. 709 uh, Gamma 2.4 Rec. 709 to Cineon Film Log. So I have this already uh, kind of adjusted and made into a compound node that I can adjust how much of the Kodak LUT that I want. So basically for me, uh, this goes before my Dehancer. And because this is exporting uh, a Rec. 709 image, my Dehancer uh, input has Rec. 709. And what's really cool is in here you have exposure compensation that you can adjust the exposure. So there's a temperature, you can adjust temperature hot and cold, you can adjust the tint. So if there's like a tint added to the, the film emulation that you're doing, um, but then this is kind of where all the magic tends to happen. So this is all of their uh, profiles. And trust me, they have so many. They have everything from like Cinestill 800T, which is a 35 millimeter film that I love shooting on uh, as far as photography. They have so many of the Fujifilm colors, Ilford, so if you want some black and white. Um, but the one that I tend to go with a lot is actually the Kodak Vision 3 500T or the 250D. Now, I, I just find the color rendition on this is really, really nice. And as you can see, there are so many adjustments. You can play with the film developer contrast boost. You can go into film compression and kind of adjust a few things. But the first thing that I usually do is I'll go directly into the expand and it allows you to adjust the black point and the white point, which basically gives you the illusion of a wider dynamic range, which is really, really nice. So you can kind of fine tune that and have it sit at somewhere that you're really happy with. I think this is where the strength of that plugin is, is because it comes with all of these micro adjustments that you can really fine tune exactly to kind of what you want for your shot. So after the expand, I usually go down to the print and there's a few different types of prints that you can go with. You can go with Cineon Film Log prints, you can go with Fuji 3513, uh, you can go with 2383 Kodak print, but since I have my, my current look is already that, um, I, just tend to, I just tend to leave it on linear and that seems to give me the most amount of control. And again, these are all things that you can keep on or turn off. So let's say you don't want the print, you can go and you can turn off the print. Or let's say you don't want the film, but you wanna keep the grain, you wanna keep the bloom, you wanna keep all of that, you can actually just turn off uh, the film emulation and not use the film emulation at all. And then the next thing that I like to go in is the film grain. So as you can see, the film grain is really, really intense when you first apply. But I tend to really lower the amount of film grain that kind of comes in because it is a little bit intense. But I really like the movement. I like how it flows. I like everything and it's so much better than what DaVinci Resolve initially had as far as film grain. And I have a little note a little bit later on in the pros and cons about the new version of DaVinci 19 and what they kind of brought to the table. And that might play with your decision in buying this plugin. And so once you've adjusted the film grain, you have halation that you can play with and enable. So if you want a little bit of that halation, and what's really cool is you can actually enable mask mode and you can see exactly what that halation is 
doing, you know, to your shots. So I'm just gonna go to super eight right now just to make it super, like, it's super big. But you can see where all that halation would be applied to. And so if you increase it or you reduce it, this is like how you're seeing what is happening. And same thing for the bloom. So you can go, you can adjust the bloom and you can kind of play with it. Uh, film damage, film breadth, and uh, gate weave, which are all really nice features that you can kind of play with. And so one thing that I actually say is because you you do lose a lot of sharpness on your image, they recommend that you add sharpening after the dehancer plugin as one of your final nodes that you're going to do. So in this case, I just have a little bit of extra sharpening to kind of bring up the detail that I originally had. But I just want to show you exactly what this plugin does. You know, so if we go like this is the original file with the Kodak 2383 LUT applied to it. And this is how it looks with the Dehancer plugin. So it's not like it's going to be something that you apply and you're done. You, you end up applying it and then have to tweak a lot of your color that you did initially. But I think the end result is really, really good. And it's definitely something that I'm gonna keep working with and using in most of my projects. So I wanna talk about a few pros for this uh, plugin. So if you're a fan of film and you like the film look, you like emulating film, this is an insane plugin and something that you need to have in your tool set because it is so powerful and it really does a good job at being super accurate with the film that it emulates. And so they have so many from Kodak, Fujifilm, Cinestill, uh, film, you know, emulations that I've never heard about. And it's just really nice to see the amount of effort that has been put into creating a plugin like this. The grain and the halation and the film bloom is so nice and so easy to work in Resolve and you can really fine tune it to your specific needs, which is fantastic. And because it's a plugin, you don't have to go and add extra film grain or extra halation as a third extra plugin, you can do it all within the Dehancer plugin. So you're doing it in one node and you're doing all of those adjustments individually, which is really nice because then you don't have to get other plugins. You can do everything within Dehancer. And I'm a big fan of Cinestill 800T and it's kind of nice to see that they've also included a lot of like photography films to it as well. Even though 800T I think is a variant of the Kodak Vision 3 uh, 2319 or uh, sorry 5219 um, but with the C41 process. But it's kind of nice to see and they've really nailed the amount of halation that that film stock has. So it was kind of nice seeing the Cinestill 800T in that list of film stocks. So it's not just movie film, it's also photography film. So coming from more of that photography background, it was really nice and kind of a fun film emulation to play with on my footage. And I could keep going on about the pros, but I think it's also important to mention and talk about the cons for this uh, plugin. Now, the biggest thing is the price. It is not a cheap plugin. Uh, it is a very specific plugin that does a very specific thing and might not be for all of your needs unless you really are into film and you like creating that kind of film look. Uh, however, as I'm filming this, DaVinci 19 just came out and DaVinci came out with their own film emulation plugin. And I haven't played with Resolve's new film emulation ever since DaVinci 19, but I do feel that might be something to factor in if you're looking at buying this plugin. So, okay, a few of my final thoughts. I think Dehancer is an amazing plugin. I really, really enjoy it. I'm very curious to see how it's going to kind of match up with the new DaVinci Resolve 19 film emulation and everything. But I still think that it's a plugin that's really worth it. It's not too demanding on your computer. I was running, you know, 4K footage with the plugin and kind of maxing out everything and my computer was still able to run everything. So I think it's a really well optimized plugin and it doesn't slow down or chug your computer too much. And I definitely see myself using it a lot more in my future projects. And so I also wanted to mention that they do have a mobile app, which is actually kind of cool. But I think if I'm out in the field and I'm kind of using it, 
it's a really nice option to see that they have a mobile version. And if I have to quickly do a, a grade and send it off to a client or send it off to the director or whatever, especially when I'm doing more travel gigs, it's nice to have that option to kind of color and use that plugin directly on mobile. I hope you guys found this video interesting and I hope it was useful to you. If you're looking at buying this plugin, again, I highly recommend it. I think it's a really good plugin. It, I was never able to get really the film grain and the emulations and everything. I tried different LUTs, different po picture profiles. And again, I'm not a professional colorist. So for me, this was super easy to use coming from a cinematography background. And I'm really excited to use this plugin on my future projects. So if you're on the fence on buying this or not, I really think it's worth it. And I think that if you can kind of justify the cost, then you're gonna be really happy with the results that you're gonna get out of this plugin. But again, don't forget, when you first apply it, kind of go and fine tune all the adjustments because it's not perfect out of the box and you have to do a lot of adjustments. So I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any opinions on the Dehancer plugins, please drop them in the comment section below. And if you're a filmmaker or a cinematographer or someone just starting out and you wanna learn more about color grading, and I have a really good video of how I color grade my YouTube videos and a step-by-step -step process on how to grade. And so if you like that, I think you'd really enjoy that video. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching this. I had a lot of fun, you know, making the intro, uh, really getting into the how the plugin works and kind of reading up and looking online to see how other people applied this into their work pipeline. And it was really important to me to kind of stay honest and be upfront with you guys with what I thought was good, what I thought was bad. And so, you know, this was kind of one of my first video reviews. So I hope you guys found this interesting. Uh, if you are interested in buying Dehancer plugin, you can actually get 10% off with my code down below. And so if you're into cinematography, lighting, editing, coloring, and just filmmaking, you should really consider subscribing to this channel because I have so many other great videos that really go into camera settings, into lighting, into coloring, and all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching this video. I love you all. And this has been an incredible experience for the last month. I really appreciate all of your support. So please like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.